the other thing that we would do is what we call as most, we can use a most to mission, objectives, strategy, and then the tactics. So this is another tool that um, you know, I found it very interesting uh, coming in from BCS model. So I've been using it for a good uh, eight years now. I found this very interesting. So just to kind of explain you what this means is it actually says that you establish a mission. You have some set of mission. What does a mission mean? It means that you define what business you are in. I think you, if you're in transport, you say that I'm in the, to be the you know, transport operator, you're in the uh, enabler, your technology aspect. So again, this is an interesting thing because right now the differences between um, the technology and the business have been you know, kind of blurry now. So what would you call Google? Is it a technology company? Or is it um, in the automotive company because they're coming up with the um, with the driverless car, for example, in the next few months, I guess. Um, and same with um, with, for example, the uh, some of these, you know, Tesla, for example, is Tesla is it an automotive company? Is it a, or is it a technology company? So what should uh, Ford and uh, GM and the Audis of the world who are they really competing against for the or for the driverless car? Is it is it a automotive company or is it a technology company they're fighting with? Because when we talk about this, they're relying all these uh, companies are relying more and more on the AI and the and machine learning to come up with this uh, you know, the kind of driverless concept, the autopilot mode to understand the you know, image recognition and so on and so forth. There's a lot of those kind of um, you know uh, AI tool tooling and uh, thinking going on. So is it automotive or is it uh, technology? as in the software technology development. What is it that they're into? So perhaps it's a, it's a blend anyway. So we need to define the, the clear business, the, the kind of uh, area of operation that we are in, we want to get into, what we intend to achieve from this product. And it's better to always have this as a one single, uh, you know, a single statement instead of having 10 different things. Again, the prioritization would really help us get there. So for example, in this context, I'm saying that the example could be the leading supply of spare parts to the global automotive company. So are you talking about, so we can actually say that this is where we want to you know, operate and play in. This is the kind of um, the vision that we have for this company. And so we say that clearly in the mission. Now with that mission in place, if you want to really be the leading player in the automotive spare parts, then you can actually kind of be a supplier to Ford, be a supplier to global. If you say global, you can actually be a supplier to Ford, mostly American US, uh, American, the Europe um, players, but as well as you can actually, you know, go into Audi and to the German market, Volkswagen, you can actually try and get into the next level. You can actually get to the Teslas of the world, the driverless and the, and, and the electric vehicles, for example. So are you trying to actually define your market slice down only to the, no, it's only for petrol uh, drive driven vehicles or is it for the electric vehicles as well? So again, the way you define, that's what I, I remember the saying called uh, marketing myopia. Uh, it's a very, uh, fav very famous uh, case study while I was doing my MBA being talked about by Theodore. Uh, what it, it talks about why companies should not actually define themselves too uh, blinkered and too myopic. So for example, in the context of uh, that uh, case study, he, he gives an example of a company which comes up with a better uh, serving whip because previously cars were uh, driven by horses and, uh, and, and then they used to have this the whips to, to whip these horses to move forward, the wagons that they were called, not cars. So this company initially was actually spending more and more effort and money and resources on coming out a better whip and a better you know, light and better things but not really on the technology of the engine. So obviously needless to say it went out of the market. And so, and so also we were discussing Kodak, right? The Kodak company about uh, last week, we were talking about why it was spending all its you know, millions of millions of funding into making a better film technology. Whereas the rest of the world moved on into the digital photography and digital um, you know, photos and uh, you know, no film photos. Whereas Kodak was uh, behind the curve. And so obviously it had to, you know, stop its business. But wise people actually think a bit more wider and that's a bit wider and, and, and deeper. And that's why why the companies, for example, like IBM, we were talking about how it started off with machines, huge machines, big, big, you know, room occupying machines and computers down to PCs and servers and blade servers and all that. Suddenly they said that we are not in this business anymore. They actually were smart enough, were nimble enough 
or agile enough to actually sell off that business and get into the services space. So they're not myopic anymore in that sense. So it's all about that. And then once you have got the mission defined, you define the goals against which you achieve. So goals or the objectives or the, uh, or the kind of benchmarks for you, milestones for you to, to go after. And so what are these objectives? How can you define them? So objectives are specific. They're the smart objectives or smart goals as we call. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. So they should be these. For example, the, for the a good uh, objective could be to increase the sales of auto spares by 35% over five years. So you're defining the period, you're defining by how much you would like to increase that. And you would also say, what is it that you're trying to increase? So it's increasing and then the number in a specific period of time. This is a, a good objective. So we talk about, I mean, I think I mentioned this briefly in, this, in the last few weeks, we talked about the critical success factors, the key performance indicators and the performance targets. So this is a performance target. It talks about a target of 35% um, increase of sales of auto spares. That's the, that's the CSF, that's the critical success factor in the key performance indicators over five years. It's not next year, or in 10 years, 100 years, but in the next five years.